everybody and welcome into my kitchen. It's been a while. Uh, I took a little break over November to just kind of take good care of myself and I hope you guys took care of yourselves as well. Got some fancy new lights so we'll see if it's bright enough now or not. <laughs> um, let's see what if you guys have any questions as we're going along let me know as always and I'll be checking the computer. Um, First off, we're going to make almond milk today, and we're going to make it kind of a cheater way using the Instant Pot. And it's beeping now because I didn't want you to have to wait 10 minutes to, to listen to almonds cook. And sooner or later, there we go. Okay, so also today is the release date of my new cookbook which is the revised vegan slow cooker. So it still has a lot of the recipes that you know and love, but it has, I think, 20 to 30 new recipes. All of them have been tweaked ever so slightly because the vegan slow cooker was my very first book. So I've learned a lot in the, <laughs> in the past eight or nine years since then. So I've tried to add that in as well. Um, there's some beautiful pictures. Let's see if I can do it this way. Some beautiful pictures from Kate Lewis. Let me see if I can find, like, just the cover is really mouth-watering, and that's the Atomic Pecan Loaf. And one of the things that I did add in here that I'm super excited about is a Thai coconut soup. And I use jackfruit, so it really does well, just like shredded chicken. And Max says hello. I don't, he may whine the whole time. I've just given them a treat. So I'm not really sure what's going on. So forgive me. But this is one of the new ones that I really like, too. It's um, a cabbage steak with potatoes and like a dill sauce. So anyhow, if you go to Amazon.com right now you can, and you order the vegan slow cooker, this is the one you'll receive. As of right this second, it's showing the old look in the book, and I've talked to the publisher about that. So hopefully it'll be showing the real one, which is the new one, which does have a lot of changes. So um, the other one has like a red and orange cover, so you'll notice that. Okay, so enough about that. And how are you guys doing today? Please um, say hey, let me know what you're doing, where you're from, what the weather's like. It's very odd here in Durham, North Carolina, because it's we've had a few days of warm weather, warm-ish weather. So I don't know what to think anymore. So back to the almond milk. So almond milk, I tend to make less than cashew milk because I don't have to think ahead for cashew milk. Is it nice to get the cashews soaked? Yes. But it's not absolutely necessary. With almonds, you've got to soften them. You have to do something. And so we're going to talk about a couple of different ways that you can do it. This morning, I used my uh, Go Wise heated blender and did that. Hi, Jeanette. Welcome. So good to see you again. And so it has a DIY milk setting. And so does the Instant Pot. I think it's the Instant Pot Ace, which is their version of the heated blender. And so what you do is you put some water in there and it heats it and it blends it. it heats it and it blends it. And it kind of helps for those extra little bit of fat to kind of emulsify a little bit more. Um, I did notice when I was looking at Instant Pot Ace, um, forums that people were not happy because they put some oil in their oat milk and I think the reason that they did that and they chose to do that was just to let it emulsify because oat milk comes apart so much more. Now if you're used to making your own nut milks you're used to stirring them up and it's not that big of a deal. Since they have a new product and it's going to be going to people who probably never made their own plant-based milk before they're trying to make it a little more like um, what you buy in the store. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, so so what I've done is I've put a cup of almonds. And I, I don't know about you guys, keep an eye out for nut sales. I think it was before Thanksgiving, but Sprouts Market had their almonds like less than half price. So I got like two or three pounds, which is why I'm making almond milk. And my cashews, I think I have like half a cup left. Um, and so... What I end up doing now, obviously, if you're into raw foods or only having raw nut products like a nut milk, you would want to soak it 
and then do your thing. You would not want to do this does cook the almonds and I'm okay with that. So if you're not do it the old fashioned way. And this little guy is so cute. He's a, a steam mate. Um, and we're going to see the little steam coming through his, his ears. You know, usually I use my dragon. And I just thought this one was really cute. I actually um, went ahead and put the link in um, just so you guys can see it. I'm using the Ultra, so that means I'm going to press a button. And what that does is it directs the steam not up under your counter, but it also looks pretty cool. So I, I'm more worried about it looking cool than redirecting it any other way. So you don't, so what we did then, I put a cup of almonds, two cups of filtered water. I use filtered water because we have a reverse osmosis system. If you don't, just use the nicest water that you have if you're going to make a milk because that's going to have, that's going to be most of it, right? Okay. And then I'm going to open this. And don't forget to remember, if you just got an Instant Pot, handle holder, other handle holder. It's very exciting. It, when you don't know about it, it's really exciting. If you do know about it, you're like, eh. So, oh, hi, Kelly. I'm glad you're excited to learn. I'm always excited to learn, too. So, here's the thing you can do here. So, do you see the water's a little bit murky? So, you could choose a couple of things here. And I think I'm going to go ahead and drain that water. You don't have to. There's two good reasons why you can drain it. And let me see, uh, let me grab um, something to drain it into. I wasn't going to originally, but I'm going to go ahead and just, so I have a strainer inside of a bowl that can take heat. I'm going to use my handy dandy little instant pot pot holders. Now, if you want to like live the large life, at this point you could go ahead and um, cool these down. Let me see if I can do it. And you can actually here. Let me rinse these under, and I'll be. I'll let you see. Me rinsing them. And we'll do the long, hard way. It's not that hard. I'm just lazy. So I'm going to run some cool water. And I'm just trying to make it cool enough so that I can handle them. Because one thing you can do that I usually don't do, honestly, is you can slip these skins off after they've been cooked. So you want to make sure they're cool enough to do this. So see, it's like a blanched almond. And this will make a nicer, smoother almond milk. Now the almond milk I'm currently drinking at this second does not have that done. Oops. One for the dogs. Now, do you guys usually peel your almonds when you do this or not? Because I do find that a lot of this gets, like, strained out with the nut milk bag or a fine mesh strainer. But since I'm telling you this new fancy way, I feel the need to show you. I know. <laughs> this is, if your kids are being bad, you can make them peel almonds. If only I could make my dogs peel almonds, then everything would be all good. And you can see here, see how it's just kind of fibrous, right? And I'm just going to sit it over to the side, and I'll deal with it later. So the water wasn't so murky that I couldn't use it, but since it was brown, I just wasn't really thrilled by it. Now, also, you could, I know they only peel after they've been boiled, basically. So if you wanted to make your own blanched almonds, you do this step. 
And then what we would do is we would toast those in the oven or in an air fryer. So actually it's kind of relaxing when they're just warm. Um, but yeah, so it, this is also why it costs more to buy blanched almonds because they have to be skinned basically. So the water was a little murky. I knew it was going to change the color since we decided we were going to peel these. This is also going to make our almond milk a little bit whiter or lighter colored, like more milk-like. So if you're worrying about someone not necessarily being cool with um, a plant-based milk, this is probably an easy way to go. Um, but yeah, so if you're just if you're just hopping in, almonds are peeling only because they were boiled, and it is not that I am magic. Okay, now you could get the same result not using your Instant Pot. We cook them for 10 minutes on high, one cup of almonds and two cups of water. Okay, we did a manual pressure release to get to this point. You could boil them on the stove. You could um, boil them in a fancy heated blender like the Go Wise or the Instant Pot Ace. You could put them in your slow cooker the night before, right? Because it's all up to you. There's no right way to do this. It's the way that works for you and works in your schedule. Okay. And so the, the reason I say this is a kind of a secret cheater trick is because typically you'd want to soak your almonds for at least 12 hours before you make almond milk. And I could just cut this short and we'll just make a little bit. Maybe. Nah. Are you guys bored with this watching me peel almonds? Because if you are, tell me and I will just make a smaller batch. I don't know why I'm just kind of interested in it. <laughs> it's one of those days, people. It's one of those days. Um, also, tell me what have you guys been making in your instant pots lately? And or and or what did you make at Thanksgiving? I want to know everything. Um, and I see a couple more people have joined in. So what I'm doing is peeling almonds that have been boiled this time in the instant pot but it could be in other appliances as well. All this does is make straining a little bit easier and it lightens up the color of your milk because basically all of this is just fiber. <laughs> I've got a great system until I start throwing the, uh, do you ever do that? You're doing corn or beans and you throw whatever's in the wrong one into the other side. Oh, totally. I'm going to show you. Okay. And uh, Kelly's saying, I don't know if I would take the time to peel them. I don't usually either, honestly. Um, and I have some that I made earlier, and I'll show it to you, too. I think the only difference is it does leave a little more to be strained out. And I actually have some of it to strain out of the first batch in a nut milk bag right now. Oopsie. There I go. Um. And I think I only peel them when I'm trying to make it fancy. And I don't make it fancy for me. I make it for other people who aren't used to plant-based foods. Sometimes I think that's nice. You know, I've never done anything with the peels except I have put them in the garden or my yard. So I think that so it can add the nutrients. But I'll look that up and see because that would be interesting. They don't really have much smell. I'm eating one. They have a, they do have a little bit of almond flavor, but I don't know if it would be enough to like really flavor anything. It's it's very mild. Okay, I'm almost done. See, so aren't you glad I didn't make you watch me cook cook them as well? Okay, awesome. Yeah, and there, there's a whole, there's always a bunch of ways to do stuff, and I am rarely say, will tell you there's only one way. 
Um, but since I figured too, since we've got two kinds going on, and I can, this is some of the almond milk that I made earlier this morning. You can see it's a little more tannish than white. And I did use um, the liquid that I cooked them in, and I did not peel them. And the one that I was just showing you, I did make on the nut milk setting in the heated blender. Maybe I'll see if these almond skins are safe for dogs to eat, because that, I'm going to make them some cookies, so that would be something else to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these in the blender and I usually use, and I'm just using this blender, you could use, you won't have to have as high a speed blender. And I'm going to start off and put two cups of water in here. How much water is how thick it's going to be, how thick and how rich. So that's one thing you have to decide. Do you want to use this for an almond creamer? Then maybe two cups is enough. If you want to do this with um, into a milk or thin milk, and actually I can let you see what I've been drinking on real quick too. This is the almond milk I made earlier today with some of the gingerbread maple so gingerbread flavored maple syrup that I made, and it's. It's awesome, and there's no caffeine in it. So if you're looking for kind of a holiday treat that fits into that, I know a lot of us use maple syrup. You probably could use date syrup, and I'm going to put that recipe up. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to put this on the blender, and let's see, we'll pulse it for a little bit. And see, it, you can still see there's some things around here, and we're going to want to um, scrape that down. So whenever you see in one of my recipes, you're blending something, just scrape it down. It's so some of this pulp has a better chance of getting incorporated with the main mixture. And I do that a lot with nut milk, um, cashew creams, things like that. Because what I, we are going to filter this, right? So it kind of doesn't matter that much, but I hate the idea of just losing these. Um, this is the GoWise heated blender. I don't know if you can see it from there. So it's a little interesting. So this bottom part actually goes on to a place that is electric. So you can't put this, it's a glass um, jar, which I really like. Um, you can totally use a Vitamix jet. You could use a blend tech. You could use something like this. You could probably use a, a less expensive blender and a less high powered blender since you've cooked them. They're a little softer. If you have um, an inherited blender that's really not very strong at all, you might even decide to cook your almonds just a little bit longer if you find that just doesn't do anything. Um, but we're going to pulse it some more. And also, actually, let's see if you can see this from the top. And see how it's kind of thick and creamy. One of the things I like to do when I make my own almond milk is to get some of that off the top and make a latte for myself. It's not perfect, and it may not be perfectly smooth because it's not um, gone through the filter. Yeah, you know, an immersion blender. I haven't tried an immersion blender, but I would think it would work. Um, it will take a lot longer, so you have to be more patient. I'm not usually patient enough for an immersion blender. Let's do this a little bit more, possibly. Hit start again. Okay. 
Okay. And I always kind of look at this and see how there's less big pieces. That's how I kind of decide it's about ready. Now, what I do need to look at is how thick is this and do I want to add more water? And it's, I'd say it's just slightly thicker than what I would expect, if I remember correctly, whole milk. So it's a little heavier than whole milk right now. And I think I'm going to add one more cup of liquid. Now, if I wanted to make a creamer with this, I might start right here because this is a really great place to start for that. I am going to go ahead and scrape down one more time. And part of the thing that I want you to know, too, because a lot of recipes say one cup of almonds, four cups of water, or one cup of almonds, three cups of water. And you don't have to make it how anybody else likes it. You just need to make it how you like it. So if you, especially if you're transitioning from um, dairy products, I think sometimes it is nice to have it a little bit richer. I know sometimes that helps Cheryl to have it a little bit more like what she's missing. mesh strainer mostly because that's what I have I have another um, nut milk bag here that's full of nut stuff and still some milk so we're going to see this as well it's messy so I'm going to do it last okay so you do need some way to strain everything out and I really like using a fine mesh strainer so it's also going to just depend on how you feel. Like, if you're super particular, if any teeny tiny gritty piece gets onto yours, then maybe you need to use a nut, bag, nut milk bag because it is significantly smaller. And one of the things that you'll see, cream gathers around here. Same thing on the nut milk bag. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I hope you guys start making some of your own because it's so, it really is cheaper, especially if you can get nuts on sale. And you would do a similar process with cashews. Um, I make pecan milk. When I make pecan milk, I don't even strain it um, because pecans are even softer than cashews. So see, this is this is the leftover pulp that we're getting out of there, right? And you can see how pretty that milk looks and how much wider it's going to look than the other one. And again, that's not to say one is good and one is bad. It just is what it is. And you should have what you like. Um, I like it because I'm not always great about remembering to soak almonds. And that's one of the reasons I keep cashews typically on hand. It's because I can use those without soaking or only soaking for an hour. I would say, it, you know, sometimes I find um, homemade milks will last a little less long. And here's why. Um, they're going to separate more. So with almond milk and cashew milk, I just kind of just stir it together. And you could do the same thing with almond milk. Um, with oat milk in particular, it only lasts a couple of days and it's not stabilized. So a lot of things that you buy at the store do have some stabilization in them and that helps them last a little bit longer. Okay, so what you do with the leftover pulp and I see a couple of almond pieces in there that were just big old pieces of almond. I don't know where they came from. But um, what I'm probably going to do is put this in the dehydrator and you can use it like almond meal. It takes a while. Um, 
I haven't really timed it. So maybe I'll try and time it this time. So that's one thing you can do. Another thing I've definitely done with this pulp, and I did this when I was making oat milk, is I would put this mixture into dog cookies because it's got nice, especially with the oats, it's great. It's great for that. Um, I also did something where I made it, and you can find it on HealthySlowCooking.com, oat chata instead of horchata. It had almonds, brown rice, and oats in it. And so you use, you, you're going to filter it like this. And I actually heated that stuff up and ate it for breakfast. It was really good. So you could put this in oatmeal. Um, you could do a lot. You could put it in muffins. Yeah. Okay. And the thing is, if you push on this too much, you're going to push some of the things you're trying not to put in. Because see how smooth that is? Re oh, sorry. In my mind, I was giving you this view. <laughs> but see how smooth it is? It's really nice. Okay. So that's one way. That's my preferred way. And let's get another spoon. I try to be really particular so I don't just dip all the stuff back in. But see how... And it's thinner than it was. And that's okay because we chose to add extra. And if, and see, it's not perfect. There is still some really teeny tiny pieces. I, when I put it in my mouth, I don't notice them. But if that's something you do, you could take even a thinner mesh strainer or this other thing and do that. You know, Kelly, Kelly's saying, have I ever tried preparing uh, my nuts in bulk and freezing them to make milk later? I have not. But I have heard people get amazing results with it. And I think it's a really smart idea. But it's just one that I just don't use as much as I'm much more likely to just go ahead and cook them up. Um, and here, let's look at this, and then I'll show you the nut milk bag, too. So, you guys, can you see the, the difference in the color? And if you don't care, it doesn't matter. Right? <laughs> this was um, with skins on blended with the cooking liquid that cooked the skins. This is, we drained off the cooking water and we took off the skins. So it looks super milk-like. And you'll see it too in this. So this is the nut milk bag. Since I used the heated setting on the GoWise blender, the DIY nut milk one, this um, was really hot because it boils it. So I needed to let this cool down. And so you just kind of squeeze it. I'll see if let's see if I can do this without making a mess everywhere. Okay. <laughs> and you can kind of see it kind of coming out all over. And even here you'll notice that some of that's coming out. But it's almost more like cream that's on the outside. Oh, of course, yeah. I don't like that it's messy. It, first off, the nut milk bag. The second thing I don't like is I find it a little hard to clean. You're supposed to either be able to put them in the dishwasher or your washing machine, and you'll have to look at the instructions for yours to see which one it lets you do. This one was not um, a dishwasher one. Ooh, and see, I just squished out some paste. But I'm going to keep that. And this got blended like crazy. I actually left it on the nut milk setting for 30 minutes. So it boiled it, it um, blends it, boils it, blends it. So this is really broken down more than a lot of lot would be. And I'm thinking, and I was thinking when I did this that I might see if I can do some sort of almond cream with it because like, let's see, this is it's not super pretty to see. But see how thin that is? That would make a great um, cream replacement. And so that's one of the things that I want to try. So do you guys have some questions about anything here? And I'm going to show you the gingerbread cookie syrup probably next week. Um, it's really easy. 
Yeah, I think the strainer's a lot easier, too. I mean, it just depends on what you want to do. Now, you still have to stir. You remember you saw me stir a lot with that um, spatula. So you want a really thin spatula because what happens, I'll show you here, you can kind of see is that it gets stuck in there. So you, if you, it'll block up all the holes. So you really have to go ahead and do that scrapey motion. And I don't find that annoying. I kind of find this and then trying to clean it. And we'll see how this is a new one. So if it cleans really well, I'll let you guys know what it is. But I get a little OCD about these because the holes are so tiny. And then I, I just feel kind of weird about it. It's nothing that's real. So it's nothing, if you like your milk bag, you should use it. <laughs> I just don't love it as much. Um, and you should get about the smallest mesh strainer that you can find. Now, if you get one that's super, 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 super teeny, teeny, tiny, you're going to be straining for a really long time. So um, I'm kind of thinking the smallest you can get at like Target or somewhere that's just easy where you would go and grab one. Okay, guys, so that was basically um, almond milk, all in all. So <laughs> the hard way, the easy way is you just soak it for like 12 hours and you just start with the same thing. So you can not soak your almonds. We used one cup of almonds, two cups of water, did it in the Instant Pot for 10 minutes on high, natural uh, manual pressure release, meaning you release the pressure when that 10 minutes is up. Then we we made them extra special, which is how we got the super white one here versus the browner one. Is we drained that cooking water, we um, peeled all those almonds after they were boiled, and then we blended it. And there's no one right way or wrong way. It's the way that you want to do it. So please leave me a message and let me know if you try this because I really want to know and let me know what methods you picked out of all these. And if you want to put up a picture of your almond milk, that would be even better because I'd love to see it. Well, have a great rest of your Tuesday and I'll talk to you next week.